Yes, hello to you all once again and uh, another very warm welcome back to your favourite and number one classic uh, dirt bike TV channel where we take a look at more of those uh, old school uh, racing bikes from uh, back in the day. Now we're just uh, continuing the countdown towards our brand new racing season for 2022 and we're only about uh, five or six weeks away from our very first race event of the year so we will be bringing you uh, some classic racing and of course more of those vintage uh, race bikes in the months to come so if you've not already subscribed to my channel then now would be a very good time to do that in order that uh, you don't miss out on any future videos that I post here uh, on my channel. Okay, so coming up now, we're going to take a look at another uh, old uh, school machine from 1977. Now, this is a bike that's uh, not fully original, but it's still a very good uh, representation of one of these old school uh, dirt bikes. So uh, without any further delay, let's just take a look at uh, Gary White's 1977 AW 250 Michael. Okay, so this uh, particular 1977 AW250 uh, Michael belongs to Scottish Twin Shock Club member Gary White. Now, Gary bought this bike from another uh, Scottish Twin Shock Scramble Club member who does a bit of wheeling and dealing with these kind of vintage Twin Shockers. And when Gary first bought the bike, it was still in quite good original uh, condition but to give the bike uh, the once over and uh, maybe put a little of his own personal touches uh, to the bike he decided to do a quick uh, cosmetic uh, refurbishment of the entire machine. Now since the bike's uh, rebuild Gary has changed uh, a few things on this machine but most it has to be said are really just uh, very small uh, changes to make the bike a bit more user friendly and basically just to freshen it up. But these older 77 Michaels were made famous, of course, by German Michael racer Adolf Wheel, who raced these bikes his entire career when he rode for the Michael factory between 1966 and 1978. And although Wheel never really won any major titles, he still won 14 German motocross national championships and also had the handle of the Iron Man of motocross because he raced Michaels for over 20 years and often against riders who were half his age. And although uh, this bike here uh, isn't uh, now a fully original AW250, it's still a very good uh, representation of one of these iconic uh, German machines from that period. Now, many Michael fanatics still say that this uh, 1970s era of the German manufactured bikes were among the golden years of the great uh, Michael empire, although uh, Michael were then, of course, elevated to superstar status when they launched the fantastic uh, Michael 490 Mega 2 in 1981, which is uh, still described even to this day as possibly the best open-class twin-shot motocrosser ever made. But uh, getting back to our 77 uh, 250, now this bike's chassis is still the original 1977 paint that's on this frame which uh, as you can see still looks super fresh for a bike that's now heading for 45 years old and uh, in actual fact I think the only painting that Gary did do to the bike was to uh, freshen up uh, these foot pegs, which of course are replacements for those uh, very skinny items that would have been bolted onto this frame in uh, 1977. Now again, as you're aware, the engine is a 250 piston port two-stroke and uh, this engine here is still on its original uh, bore from 1977 and as far as I'm aware, uh, there's not been any major work done on this engine's internals, although uh, the outside of the barrel was uh, shot or vapour blasted by Mark uh, Freudeno at MHF uh, Restorations as the, the barrel on this bike was originally coated with a very thick black paint when Gary uh, first uh, bought the bike. Now once again it's good to see that Gary's still using 
uh, this uh, tried and tested Bing carburetor on his Maiko, as uh, many riders do tend to swap these for much more uh, modern uh, Japanese carburetors like a Makuni. But uh, if you can get these Bings jetted and set up correctly, then they are every bit as good as any uh, Japanese equivalent. And uh, personally speaking, uh, I did use these older Bings on my old uh, 250 and 440 Michaels back in the day and I always found them uh, pretty good at what they did. But uh, like I said, you needed to take your time just to set them up uh, correctly. And again, in this late uh, 1970s period, Michael were still using the older primary chains to connect the clutch uh, to the crankshaft, which again, uh, works reasonably well, but uh, you had to keep your eye on those uh, chains for signs of stretching or damage. And uh, often in severe cases, they've been known uh, to break altogether, but uh, thankfully, uh, these kind of incidents are uh, few and far between. And again, as I remember, I think that many of the early Michael race bikes had the ancient uh, mechanical contact breaker points to trigger the sparks uh, for the cylinder, but uh, thankfully nowadays we have much more efficient electronic uh, motoplat uh, types of ignitions on these uh, German race bikes. Now, although Gary's bike uh, still has many of its original uh, 1970s parts still fitted on it, one of the upgraded fixtures uh, that he put on the bike was this replacement Dutch-made exhaust expansion chamber. Now, this very high-quality expansion chamber is made by uh, Sees Leugen in Holland, and uh, these pipes are uh, more or less just a straight bolt-on replacement for that Michael original. And as you can see here, they're very high quality and they certainly look uh, much better than the uh, 1977 pipe that would have been fitted to this uh, machine. But again, this rear tailpipe is easily dismantled to remove the baffle in order that you can replace and then uh, repack it with its uh, silencer uh, packing. And so as we move on to the front end of the bike, now as far as I know, this uh, Michael still has its uh, 1977 forks and triple clamps fitted, although uh, Gary's uh, now added uh, this pair of fork socks to the stanchions, which uh, should help a little by keeping dirt and other debris from damaging those uh, delicate fork internals. Now, although personally speaking, uh, I've always thought that these uh, types of socks tended to hold in the moisture, which of course isn't good for those uh, fork legs, but uh, you'll all have to make your own mind up on that uh, particular uh, fork issue. Now again, and as you'd expect, these AW250s were still using the old school drum brakes back in 77, and these were still very good stoppers uh, for their time because uh, these uh, 250 Michaels weren't really a heavy bike uh, to be fair so they were uh, reasonably easy to stop with these drum brakes. Now once more at the back of our 77 250 we have a set of the old uh, Corti Cosso suspension units and although these uh, can't effectively uh, be rebuilt internally these uh, were still given the once over and refurbished once again by Mark at Freudeno at MHF Restorations. And Mark again is another very good contact to keep in mind if you need any dirt bike related resto services like vapor blasting or entire motorcycle restorations done. Now, once more, there's certainly no mistaking the authenticity of this alloy fuel tank and uh, this once again is the original part that was fitted to this bike from 1977 and you have to say that uh, these 70s shaped uh, coffin style tanks and the other uh, oval shaped ones of maybe the 1979 bikes were all uh, much nicer 
than the plastic fuel cells that Michael fitted to the later bikes and as you can see here again the paint on this tank is still about as fresh as it was when it was first painted back in the day. Now the bike's seat was another one of the components that had undergone a full uh, refurbishment and uh, this seat here with its embroidered Michael logo at the back was all refurbished by John O'Young at uh, Scott Seat. Now Scott Seat not only do these uh, motorcycle seats but they also do handcrafted specials for cars and camper vans and almost every other type of vehicle that you can imagine. So uh, once again another uh, manufacturer to possibly add to your diary of usable contacts and the other plus point here is that uh, this company Scott Seat are all local to the Ayrshire area of Scotland. Now once again a decent set of uh, handlebar grips and Magura levers have been fitted onto the business end of this bike along with those uh, red Magura uh, lever covers although I'm pretty sure that the Gunnar Gasser throttle twist grip uh, I'm sure has had a new set of Venhill control uh, cables uh, fitted to it and on that clutch side of the handlebars as well an engine kill switch has been added just in case Gary has any uh, problems with that 250 Michael motor and he needs to uh, shut it down uh, in a hurry. Now the bike's graphics that are fitted to these side panels and uh, to this front number plate are all supplied by Ian and Alan Reed at MXM uh, Graphics and uh, MXM can of course supply everything you'll ever need with regards to motorcycle graphics uh, for your dirt bike and uh, especially if you need to personalise it uh, like uh, Big Gary has done here. But uh, once again Gary's 250 Michael here still has its uh, original 1977 alloy Akront uh, wheels on uh, both the front and the rear uh, of this bike and as you can see a very sizable rear sprocket was also used on the back just to help that uh, gold DID chain uh, to put that Michael's power onto uh, this rear wheel. And so uh, moving on to the bike's plastics. Now this front mudguard is a Falk manufactured part that were made apparently in Germany and uh, they're certainly not a plastics manufacturer that I'm readily familiar with and uh, you can see also here that Gary's added a little sticker here from Mark uh, Freudenau's MHF uh, Restorations Company who did a couple of jobs on uh, this machine for him. Now the rear mudguard is uh, again not the original part from 1977 but is a replacement uh, UFO plastic part but it still looks the business on this uh, old 1970s uh, twin shocker. But as we said uh, although Gary's bikes maybe not a fully original AW250 from that late 1970s period it still has a few uh, non-stock parts uh, fitted onto it but it's still a very nice machine and of course a bike that I'm uh, quite familiar with as I did film this bike uh, some years ago back when the previous owner had it and uh, as you can see in this clip there's not uh, been a whole lot of changes uh, done to the bike in that time and even here in 2016 it was still a very good example of an AW250 Michael. And so as the uh, brand new 2022 racing season approaches, Gary's uh, certainly looking forward to getting uh, this 250 Twin Shocker out on the track and racing it in the uh, 250 uh, Twin Shock class. But uh, as I said, another fine example of one of these old Adolf wheel 250s from that 1970s period. So uh, we've all had a quick look around and talked a bit about the bike. 
So let's just see if Gary can get it fired into life. Oh. Well, there you have it, another proud Michael owner there, and uh, that's Gary White, or Big Gaz, as he's known to his friends with his uh, very nice 1977 AW250 Michael. So as you can see, there's uh, still plenty to see and do here on my YouTube channel in the coming year, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then I do hope you will consider doing that in the future and of course that way you won't miss out on any future videos that I post. Okay, so coming up next on uh, Classic Dirt Bike TV we'll be uh, going back to the Rob Hughes Classic Dirt Bike Collection and uh, in this next video we'll be taking a look at this lovely pair of uh, CCM four strokers. Now, as you know, Rob Hughes has a fantastic collection of these Allen Clues machines and uh, we'll be taking a look at this lovely pair of uh, CCMs when we return for my next uh, video posting. But of course until then everybody uh, continue to be safe and well out there while you're riding those old uh, vintage uh, dirt bikes and I hope to see you back here again very soon when we talk about more vintage iron right here on your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel.